is a guy named Mike Mansfield. Uh, I think of Montana as a senator, passes something called the, the Mansfield Amendment, which discontinues Army or D Department of Defense military funding for blue sky research inside of our universities. And what is blue sky research? Hey, you're a young person. You're super smart. Here's a pile of money. Don't even tell us uh, what you're working on. We just believe in you. Go to it. This is what caused us to be the envy of the effing world. Cowboy science. We were wild, okay? We had skirt chasing, hard drinking, uh, charismatic, brilliant human beings who answered to no one and walked around with swagger with their shoulders back and their chests puff puffed out. Because around Sputnik, we wanted the best of the best to go into science. Around 1973, we discontinue this. We start talking about Golden Fleece Awards. How did you waste the taxpayers' money? You know, mm. and we become incapable of equaling the performances. Like we 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 worship Ted Williams because nobody's turned in a Ted Williams style performance in ages. Even Ed Witten can't do it. In any era before this, Ed Witten would won a Nobel Prize. The guy. Six months older than he is from 1951, a guy named Frank Wilczek, who won the Nobel Prize. Even t being a tiny bit young, uh, older than Ed Witten, uh, you know, you, Frank is brilliant, but he's not Ed Witten-like. He got a Nobel Prize for uh, something called asymptotic freedom in, um, in strong interactions. This newfound impotence, let's just call it impotence. It's like you turned the world's most v vital people into castrati. And you did it by accounting for their dollars, making them, uh, you know, say how everything they did had a practical application, defending the purpose of blue sky research uh, as if they were wasting taxpayer dollars. They got call called, uh, you know, welfare queens and white lab coats. The whole thing is completely ridiculous. But we have been in the process of dismantling the world's most productive, powerful scientific enterprise from really 1960 five or 73 till the present day. And the 65 date dates from Ghislaine Maxwell's father. Robert Maxwell is basically the son of a bitch who introduced peer review, which had only really been strong in the biomedical literature, into general science because he figured out how to make a fortune hacking the universities. If you're a university, if you want to have a complete library, you have to buy all the journals that papers appear in. So he said, great news. I'll jack up the prices and jack up the number of journals. I'll just explode the number of journals. And every university that doesn't want to be incomplete has to buy my product. So suddenly there weren't enough good editors to edit all of these tiny micro journals, you know, journal of hyper-specific thing X. So peer review comes screaming in in 1965 uh, through his company, Maxwell's company, called uh, Pergamon Press. Um, so Ghislaine's Maxwell's father is like the first major attack on science. And then the Mansfield Amendment comes in. There's something called the Eilberg Amendment in 1973. In 1980, there's something called the Bayh-Dole Amendment. Then there's the Immigration Act of 1990. And we're just chipping away at the vitality of American cowboy science. So right now, if you go into a science department, the whole question is, well, what have you done for diversity inclusion and equity, you know, let's agree that there's no lone geniuses in the world, as if we didn't have Einstein and von Neumann and Teller and all these people. Everything is communal. Everything is in the air. It's like nobody wants to work in this environment. Nobody good, mm. right? So whatever it is, we have been devitalizing, certainly since 1973 for 50 years, but also really since 1965. How do you turn that boat around though? We're doing whatever we can. like. If you're rich and you're smart and you're connected, if you're part of some secret program and you're watching this, please reach out to the Joe Rogan experience or Eric Weinstein to turn the ship around.